Jurassic World <laughs> Dino Dump. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really wish that I was there when you almost got kicked out. <laughs> when the fucking dinosaur looks back at him and like almost tilts its like dinosaur hat at Chris Pratt, I'm like, I'm in tears. I'm laughing so hard. Oh, I just, I know they're probably never going to stop making those fucking things, even though they've said like, oh yeah, this is the final one. Of but this trilogy. They're going to make like, please, yeah. for the love of God, stop making these things. That one was just God awful. I hated having to watch it. I was just like, I can't, I can't take this. It's so bad. Oh, goody, goody. Here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> Oh my god, don't stop now! With your hosts, Ryan, John, and Elaine. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Connie, to join my fellow co-host and filmmaker, John Woolscroft. Uh, Belgian Waffle Trophy Hut. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. We're, we're so out of practice. I just didn't oh, know what are. to do. We're really out of practice. It's been so long. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, we're in episode 254, and this is our first episode that we've recorded in part, like, it, like through our normal, uh, you know, uh, workflow since when? October. October. Yeah. Early October. <laughs> yeah. Surprise, folks. The episodes <laughs> you were listening to were all done batch recorded, which I, if you were paying attention to like the past episodes, I mentioned that. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're at episode 254, and it, it's it's our tradition. It's our tradition. John, you reminded me of this. It's our tradition to uh, our first episode of the year be a year in review. And we've got, got something special planned for this one. So normally we do a, a part one, part two type thing, but but this time around, we've got something special. Do you want to talk about kind of what what our special series with this part one and part two are? Yeah, yeah. So first, what we're going to do, we're going to take what we normally do is two episodes. Brian mentioned we're going to squeeze it together. Yeah. In, into one, like, nice chunk, nice, healthy. A nice, nice deuce. Chunk. Yeah. Nice deuce. <laughs> yeah. One you know, a, you, solid, a solid brick. Yeah, you feel good about it. It's nice and thick and A lot slimy. of accomplishment. Yeah. A little yeah. accomplishment. And then if it's um, thick and sl- thick and slimy, I think you need to go see a doctor. Well, yeah. <laughs> Mine is just liquid. That saves oh, me a lot of time. That's you know? not good either. <laughs> and black. You know, it's Ew. fine. Oh uh, god. <laughs> welcome back, folks. Um yeah. uh, but we're also this has been a surprisingly amazing year for horror in a way that I don't I mean, every year there's tons of horror movies yeah. out there, but but there are many horror movies of note this year. That are, like, yeah, th- that are good yeah that are good not some, just terrible <laughs> some some are bad uh, some are uh some they tried really hard and failed like uh, uh don't worry darling but oh, <laughs> we'll yeah. get to that uh god bless them they tried um but so yeah i thought you know why don't we talk about you know the year that was horror um you know because you had mentioned and we'll discuss it next week uh the the menu you saw that oh, we both loved it yeah so yeah my my wife was a little pissed at me because nor like I, I i don't know if 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 you've ever had to deal with this where like you watch a movie with your significant other and like you, they wanted to see it too so then they're a little angry that you watched it and that kind of happened <laughs> <laughs> like i i had mentioned to lauren like lauren i saw this saw this really good movie and we, we got to watch it and, and she's like oh is it the menu i'm like yeah He's like, oh, well, I don't want to watch it with you now because you already watched it. I'm like, God damn it. So, <laughs> yeah. And I've even said, I'm like, I'll watch it again because it's that good. But now once once you've popped the watch, Jerry, it's 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 hard to go back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so next week is going to be uh, our 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 year in review horror edition. So because, I, you know, I, I love horror movies and I even even I was surprised by the number of good ones like i i have shutter uh john i think you have shutter as well and like even some of the stuff that was coming to shutter which shutter is is great but oftentimes it can get kind of muddied with with some things that you're like oh well that's that's interesting b movie schlock but you know every once in a while you get some really good ones and there were some really good ones even on shutter 
that I was surprised by. So yeah, that'll be that'll be next week's episode. Hey, Shutter needs to fill out, you know, like there's so it's like, thank you for calling Shutter, you're greenlit, you know. <laughs> uh yeah, either that or they're they're putting out um basically what I would call 1970s uh, porn. But <laughs> I've noticed that a couple. I'm like there are a couple I'm like like this is pornography. <laughs> but but yeah, so you're in review 2022. Um kind of a dumpster fire but i don't know if 22 is nearly as big of a dumpster fire as say 21 and and obviously 2020 was um but in entertainment terms i i mean how do we want to start this john do you want to talk about the biggest like news story because in my my head and i don't know about you but i think probably the biggest news story for 22 has to do with warner brothers oh that's a good place to start that's Wouldn't on you my agree? list yeah, and I, I don't have them in any particular order. Okay. I just wrote every okay. news story I can think of. But yeah, why don't you fill us in on yeah the absolute colossal <sighs> fucking maniac mistake oh, that Warner okay. Brothers and Disney okay. or not Disney just no, it, it, for for, for yeah. once, man, this is not Disney. Like <laughs> that's the, that's the funny part is that for once I'm not trashing Disney. <laughs> give uh, us give us time, <laughs> Warner's. We'll buy you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so as as most people are probably aware, um, Discovery bought Warner Brothers. I, I was it at the beginning of the year, around yeah, like like maybe like March. I don't know. I I don't, I don't know the specifics, of, but but basically, Warner Brothers bought. Uh, oh no, excuse me, Discovery bought Warner Brothers, and one of the things that they started to do was basically you know i i would say uh cut at the kneecaps the content on hbo max uh and from what i was reading it was it was basically a matter of the the the, the head of discovery the person that they, who they ultimately put someone in charge uh they they really feel that uh basically warner brothers is and hbo max in particular uh should be geared more towards manly men things and more conservative things and discovery should be more feminine. Like I, I remember seeing an article where they, this was literally laid out. So what, what they've started doing, well, not really what they started doing, but it's what they've been doing is, is really looking at it and going like, okay, what things are we cutting? So Batgirl, which was a movie that was completed, like done. Like yeah. we're not even talking like they had to do any post-production. No, they were done. Can it you was, say tax write-off kids? It, well, it, it's exactly yeah. what it is. Um, so they they shelve Batgirl, um, which, I mean, I don't know how good it was, if it was good or if it was terrible. I don't really know uh, because I've never seen it. You know, that's yeah. that's one of the things. It's hard for me to judge a movie if I've never seen the fucking thing. Well, so, even Disney released the new mutants, even though they're yes, like, they did. They're like, well, that that's old stuff, and it's not going to do. It. But they're like, well, at, let's at least try to make a couple of bucks instead of nothing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, like they shelved that movie entirely, and then they started going on. I, I'm going to call it what it is: uh, a massacre of content. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you describe it that way? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So they started getting rid of shows left and right. And I mean they're they're now saying like, well, we spent too much money. It's like, okay, that's fine, but a lot of the things that they were getting rid of were you know, from correct me if I'm wrong, but they were you know, run by people of color of different races and you know, they decided to cut it completely. They want to make Warner Brothers great again, okay? I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. I, I mean, I don't agree with that, I, but that's exactly what, what they're doing. So they've cut a lot of shows. They they removed a ton of content. Um, all and, and there's there's rumor now that and I don't I, this is alleged. I'm not I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but there's rumor now that they're going to combine HBO Max into Discovery. And that would be one streaming service. Which, which is fine if you're not gutting everything, you know. Uh, I I mean I I don't I, I guess my problem with it is that the people who are behind a lot of these things that have been cut. I mean, yeah, you could say what you want about oh well, you know these things are expensive, but it's like what about the 
just putting this shit out there and just seeing what happens. But as you said, John, there is there is a cost with putting stuff out, even if it is like not even promoted. Like I imagine if they put Batgirl out, that they now are responsible for paying out royalties to every person involved, right? Mm-hmm. So like if someone goes and watches it, guess what? That's now a cost that that Warner Brothers has to fit. Um, but yeah, it it's it's been something that's really, you know, it, it's one of those like zombie news stories, which you're like, oh, man, that's really shitty. Uh, hopefully they get their shit together. And then, you know, a couple months later, there's a new thing with it. It's just like it doesn't end. And it's um, hard. It's some, somewhat hard to follow because it's a lot of like it's very inside baseball business, like very yes. much boardroom kind of shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just it's something that like I, I know for me, HBO Max is is always kind of been like one of the weaker streaming offerings for me at least there's a couple shows i watch here and there like white lotus i I watch which i think is hilarious Uh, although season two i gotta be honest with you i mean i don't know if you follow a white lotus at all right nope nope a season two is not as good as season one um but that's kind of just how hbo has always been right like there's always been series that are really groundbreaking they have some good documentaries but it's not the I, I never felt that HBO was like the popcorn, you know, uh, very generic entertainment that I, I see Netflix as. Right. It's yeah. always been on the, the critical side. And that's one of the things is that you really kind of have to know what you want to watch if you're going to HBO Max. Well, certain movies, like, you have to make a conscious decision whether you want to yes. watch this, but you throw on Netflix, and it's like, the craziest bitch from Tucson <laughs> who murdered, like, a busload of, you know, homeless people in 1976. It's like, oh, I kind of want to watch oh, that. I, I, I watched the one about the bodybuilder mom who killed her, her like, uh, husband. Yeah, there you go. That, yeah, one's, a, that one's a fun watch. Because that's like, <laughs> all right, put it on. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. No, that's, that's totally what it is. Uh, but yeah, so it's, well, I guess what, what I've, you know, just to round out this story, what I think is interesting is just how, you know, and, and I brought this up when we were at uh, Erie Horror Fest about the monetary outweighing the content in a way. And I really feel that, uh, you know, pandemic, I want to say post pandemic because we're still in it, guys. Um, but, uh, you know, now that we've we're kind of settling with the pandemic, I really believe that you know Warner Brothers is on the wrong track and is going to cut nearly everything off to the bone because of dollars and cents. You know the people involved in these productions. You know, yeah, you can say well they were greenlit and it's too costly, it's too much. It's like I get that, but like you had people of color who were involved in these productions. Clearly, I'm sorry to say this. The content that's being cut off is heavily in in dealing with 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 people of color, different races who are producing this content. So it, you can't just say that it's across the board. Oh, it's everybody. No, it's not. You know. Um, so I I guess my my point on this is just HBO Max has seemed to be going in the gutter. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, and I I think back to and I can't even remember because they were very unsuccessful like was it cbs plus or something oh uh, like yes 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 and, cbs plus yeah and they did the smart thing and became paramount plus they went mm, yep. nobody wants to watch that many reruns of taxi maybe we should put the whole paramount onto a streaming service instead of just you know old episodes of all in the family and so that's what hbo could have done but- well well, what what Paramount Plus I think did really well was they led with their most notable catalog first. The first series that really was like hitting you in the face to get you to want to get Paramount Plus was Star Trek Discovery. Like like the Trekkies. Well, and George Hill's Twilight Zone. Well, well, yeah, that. But I I don't think nearly as many people came for Jordan peels twilight zone as much as people came for discovery like i know people who are trekkies who were like oh yeah yeah i i'm gonna get this just for discovery because that fan base is rabid just like star wars fans or anyone else um but then they they followed it up with twilight zone and then they followed it up 
with uh, the show Evil, which is also really good. So like they've they've continually led. Now, yeah, Paramount Plus has movies. They have series like All in the Family and shit like that, but they've never led with those. They've led with with new original content that maybe are only a couple that drive people to them, um, you know, and it's it's unlike some of the other ones like Netflix did that. And now I think they've reached a point where they're completely oversaturated and now we're just gobbling everything up. Um, Amazon Prime has started doing a little bit of that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's something where. I think HBO Max tried to leverage all of their content at once. And now they're in a position where they're just like cutting it to the bone. So I'm curious to see what happens to HBO Max. And if it really does become a, you know, home for the machismo uh, MAGA Republican. Spike TV, the streaming service. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. I think they're, we needed that. Apparently, I think they're going to be the streaming service equivalent of like the Challenger. So we'll, we'll wait and see. <laughs> um, you you really are milking that, aren't you? You're milking <laughs> that shit, the Challenger shit. That you know, uh, it, it, we're going to get some negative reviews because of that. Probably, probably. So, <laughs> sorry for all you people that desperately just saying, hold on to the just Challenger. Saying, watch, watch J Dub video nasties. Uh, Check in on Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory because <laughs> yeah. I was I cracked up, <laughs> but I'm a horrible person. So there you go. Uh, well, moving on here, just keep pace here. Uh, yep. Will Smith done smacked a bitch on on <laughs> national television. Oh man, you know, just when I hate the Oscars, right? <laughs> like, like I, I've how many times, John, have you and I gone back and forth, and I've just been like, I fucking hate the Oscars. I can't stand them. Um, you know, it's a pageantry show. It has no meaning and it's empty and shallow and really ridiculous. Oh, see, and I like it. Be- and I like it in the it. same way. I like bad movies. Like I, I don't really, I don't really care who wins. It could right. Freddie got finger could have won best picture. And I just would have laughed my ass off. You I'm know, like surprised <laughs> it has not won best picture. <laughs> so like, Fred yeah, I, wa- <laughs> I watch it for the nonsense of it. You, on the other hand, just can't stand it. I can't. Do that, yeah, so. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. So I, I, I make it a point. But yeah, sure enough, this is what the second year that we've had some crazy shit. Like first it was Warren Beatty not knowing how to read. OK, and then it was it, it was was the smack heard around the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, and the thing is, I was watching this on my laptop. I didn't have cable, didn't have like my TV set up and stuff. So I was like yeah. streaming it off of uh, what? I can't even remember what channel. AB, I think it was ABC. And so I was streaming it off of their site. Between, and, you know, Windows of Pornhub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. During the commercial break, you have to do something. I was watching somebody named Oscar uh, put something <laughs> heavy into a, into a, an actress's hands. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. Um, but the thing is, it was kind of glitchy. And the thing is, when um, Will Smith went up there and smacked Chris Rock, like, the audio cut out because Will Smith was just going on a verbal tirade of f bombs. I thought my my uh, streaming of it had just cut out. Really, I didn't because I because I said I was watching it with somebody and I turned. And I'm like, wow, that that looked real. I, that you know, it looked like he actually slapped him. And the person I was with just was ashen white. Like, no, dude, he <laughs> he just went on stage and smacked Chris Rock in the face. And I went, no. And then Twitter blew up on my phone. Be like, Will Smith just <laughs> assaults Chris Rock on national television. I'm like, oh, my God, that was real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I, I only watch the, uh, the the video after the fact, you know, because I don't watch the Oscars. Yeah. So, you know, I'm watching. I'm just going like, did, can he really, did he really smack him? Did he really? Oh, no, he did. And I, I got to say, like, um. Uh, fact that uh, no uh charges were filed and uh well you have to press charges for charges to be filed. well Chris i rock like was like nah yeah, he should have um because that's assault like i don't care and and like you you ask people on both sides and of course like an assault of a person who's telling a joke clearly is inappropriate i don't care who you are um but like you know, you had people who were like, well, he stood up for his woman and he stood up. He, how dare he tell a joke? It's like, dude, he, that's literally what his job is to do is to tell fucking jokes. OK, and going right to violence is not exactly. The yeah, solution. yeah, yeah. 
So you had some people like, oh, he's standing by his woman. And then you had like, I don't know, normal people who are just going like, uh, no, this is assault and you can't do that because then what what happens with any comedian? You know, there's there's literally a style of comedy that is just ripping on the audience. Like, you know, I, I've I've been to comedy shows and I know you have, too. And, it you know, that's that's part of the thing. And you go in knowing that. And I think that, you know, for Will Smith to decide that, oh, well, uh, I decide what's appropriate or not is just inappropriate on his part. Well, and the thing is, I I thought his role as King Richard, I thought it was laughably terrible. I didn't see it. That's the problem. I I, yeah. And I see I would not have seen it. I had no interest in it except that it was nominated for Best Picture. And it's kind of like almost a game for me to see. Yeah, I, I, I know for you, that's yeah. kind of what you do. You'll go yeah. in and watch all these. Yeah. And and I thought it was hysterically bad. And I'm like, there's no way he can win Best Actor. But as soon as he smacked Chris Rock in the face, my entropy and like schadenfreude kind of took over. And I'm like, please, God, tell me he wins because I want to <laughs> see that speech. And he didn't disappoint where he blamed, I think, like, uh the character he was inhabiting he blamed the devil he never once like blamed himself it was it was so beautiful yeah i mean <laughs> just I'm sorry. narcissism the only, the, yeah. the only person to blame is your fucking self yeah. you decided to get up out of your seat walk up to a person on national television and strike a person because you didn't like a joke like, I, I don't care what the fuck your deal is. You know what you could have done? Very simply, done an interview or d- waited until you got your best best uh, actor nom and best actor award, excuse me, and said, you know what? Fuck Chris Rock. That's all he could have done. That's what yeah. a normal person. If you didn't like what, an, what a, an actor said about your wife, fine. That's okay. There There's a way to handle it, and there's a way not to handle it. And striking a person... I don't care if it's open palm or closed fist. You still struck a person. Yeah. Over a fucking joke. So, yeah, I I, fuck Will Smith. I mean, honestly, he's gone fucking downhill anyway. I don't care if he, you know, with King Richard or not, but I still go back to you made uh, after Earth, too. So, (laughs) yeah, that's on your resume, too. I don't want to spend too much time on this next one because I didn't care for it when it was happening, but I do think we just need to acknowledge its yeah. existence. And that's the whole Johnny Depp, Amber Heard circus that we all had <sighs> to was, sit through this year. That was a fun one. That was a fun one. And I, I still hear people, uh, you know, rumblings of it too. Like, you know, I think at the time my mom was like, oh, Johnny Depp's a good person. And I'm like, yeah, but he's still, he's <laughs> yeah. still kind of shitty. Like, don't get me wrong. He was totally abused, but he was also pretty shitty too. Like there, let's just let's just, and I've even said this to people whenever someone brings it up. I'm like, let's just uh, re- reside herself to that. They're both terrible fucking people. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is like that movie, Reversals of Fortune. Uh, yeah, about yeah, Klaus von Bülow and how he killed his wife, and it's like, yeah, he may have killed her, but she sucked too that doesn't excuse poisoning her no but like but everybody involved was a scumbag you know? yeah and i've heard some people like, oh well you know she she drove him to him. like okay but there's some things you just don't do right and and you're telling me that it, he he could had no control over his actions the entire relationship like don't get me wrong it, it, she's terrible and she's paying for it you know um, both in her career and financially. So I, I get that, but like they're both terrible fucking people. You can't well, you can't yeah. sugarcoat that. Well, I do think though that there is a hell of a lot of underlying um misogyny that goes in this because like she she will never have like a real career again. She might be like Oh no, she's the, gone. Yeah, some video or some movie made in India that goes right to Red Box is her future. But Johnny yeah. Depp is going to be Captain Jack Sparrow again. Like, well, yeah, I, I think they already said that they were they were planning on bringing him back, or they asked him after they had complete. Now, again, don't be wrong. Like, I I think that if we're just trying to sign blame, I I do think Amber Heard probably is about a good chunk of it. I mean, everything that kind of came out during that trial pretty much puts her in a fucking negative light. Um, but you can't say that Johnny Depp is blameless. No. You just yeah. can't. Um, now, I, again, none of us were in the room. 
during that relationship. And it, by all accounts, I'd say that they were both toxic to each other and they were just talk in a very toxic relationship. But, you know, it, it's turned, it turned into a fucking circus. And, and I just like with everything in this country nowadays, it seems to just divide people. Yeah. You know, well, well, good looking people who are rich fighting each other. We seem <laughs> yes. to like that a lot. That's uh, it's our it's our national pastime. Like everyone says baseball is I'm like, no, no, no. It's watching celebrities eat each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, speaking of something eating up the box office, uh -oh. um, I hate to say it, but Top Gun basically saved the movie theaters this uh, year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How much money did that movie make? Uh, I have that information. A uh, shit ton. One point five billion. <laughs> Ooh. One yeah, I a Top Gun sequel, thirty years after the fact, should not even have made like a hundred million. But I guarantee you that Christopher Nolan is hating that movie so much right now. Because <laughs> it was it was foretold in the before times that his movie, Tenet, would save the film industry in the movie theater industry in the before and it times in the save before us, times <laughs> save us <laughs> unfortunately we got a mumbling mess that you couldn't understand but you know good on tom cruise for delivering the goods good for him good for cgi voice val kilmer uh you know because i think that did you see it I, I didn't see it yeah i just i heard about that i it, i never was, was a big talk Gun fan man like, I, I neither I was, was i yeah, um, but because of the reviews that got and everything, I waited till I could stream it. I didn't go to the theaters or anything, but I saw it and it was it was entertaining. It wasn't the, like the second coming of cinema, the way some people are talking about it. It was just a fun action movie. The end. But, you know, it's going to happen, right? What's that? Oh, there we're, we're going to get a ton more sequels to movies from the 80s. I mean, we were already going to anyway, but like if I'm uh, a soulless venture capitalist in New York who's funding movies, I'm going to look at Top Gun and go, I need more movies like Top Gun. Red Dawn 2, Electric yes. Bizaloo. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious because that's that's how, how, how movie industry works nowadays. And lastly here, just on the news stories, um, is the the Jeffrey Dahmer uh show on on was that netflix it was netflix yeah um that that created quite a stir wasn't it like jeffrey dahmer monster the jeffrey dahmer story wasn't the title absurdly stupid yes yeah it was monster like jeffrey dahmer or something like that i, I don't know yeah. but uh basically a pigeonholed evan peters to be a creepy fucker in every movie and series now for the rest of his life yeah. for the rest of his life that or Quicksilver. Or, or Quicksilver. <laughs> yeah. uh, or not Quicksilver. Or he might be just Boner. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, like I, I saw it and I liked it. But at the same time, and I, I think you and I had this conversation when we were at uh, Erie. But like it's unsettling to watch it and say, oh, yeah, this is good because this is like it's it's very accurate in its depiction of everything like it's it's really creepy it, it doesn't really offer a ton of creative license to it it very much is factual in in its production and i think that's what's unsettling about it well and i think a lot of people's complaints and understandably so that even if you're not portraying him as a hero or anything like we as human beings whether we like it or not, end up towards having empathy for a main character. And, you know, and a lot of the people that are the people, uh, the family members of those that he, the real Jeffrey Dahmer murdered saying like, stop, even if unintentionally making a hero out of the murderer of my yeah. brother or cousin or what have you. Um, but I, I, I did see it more as a commentary on how, you know, the police turned a blind eye to murders in minority uh, communities, whether yes. that be sexual or uh, orientation or skin color, color what have you. Um, and I thought that was a more important message than accidentally glamorizing Jeffrey Dahmer. However, I, I do not have any family members that he murdered. So it's, it's easy for me to say. Yeah. I, I think I don't feel that the series itself was glamorizing Jeffrey Dahmer, 
but I can, I can, I think just the fact that money was making this thing and then money was generated because of this thing is, is probably what, what irked people. The fact that it became culturally in the zeitgeist again is what hurt people. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, this series very much illustrated the failure of the police in basically dealing with this and it illustrated it a hundred percent and it's issues that we're still dealing with um i also think some of the unsettling nature comes from the fact that a majority of these episodes were directed by jennifer lynch who is as most people might guess the daughter of david lynch <laughs> of david lynch yeah. yeah yeah so like that kind of made sense to me like i saw i'm like oh i get why this is creepy <laughs> um, but <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I think that might might be the big deal. It's just that it became in the cultural zeitgeist again when most people who were actually affected by Jeffrey, uh, you know, really don't want to have to hear his name or see their stories just plastered again. Yeah. Um, good way. Good way to end that here. Uh, just briefly touch on the people that we lost this year. Yeah. Uh, Barbara Walters just squeaked it in. Barbara uh, Wawa. Baba Baba. Yeah, right here, <laughs> right here at the end of the year. I did not think I was going to have her on this list. Uh, crazy person, uh, Kirstie Alley. Uh, <laughs> crazy person. Okay, she got crazy towards the end. Yeah, for reasons that we we can't say. <laughs> let's uh, let's rhymes just say- with Ronald Rump. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and also a, a certain group that she hangs out with that use meters. We're just not going to say whom. That use meters, yeah, to you know, so they know the aliens inside oh, your volcanoes. And, okay, yeah, yeah, wait, yeah oh, uh, allegedly, oh, yeah, allegedly, yeah, yeah, yeah allegedly. allegedly, allegedly. We'll just keep saying allegedly, allegedly. until yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, the weirdly, I don't think anybody actually really cares that Kirstie Alley died. It's kind of a shame. Like she was so popular when she was on Cheers, and now it's just kind of like, oh, Kirstie Alley died. Whatever. But I don't think that's the case. I, th- I mean, she did. She was a good actress in for her time you know a lot of movies like look who's talking that whole series was really carried by her and john travolta um so you know i i get why yeah i don't think anyone you know she was relatively young too i mean she was what in her 60s yeah yeah Yeah, not not old enough to die no no i I didn't i mean you know it's still sad when someone passes away even if they are you know that but (laughs) but no i i mean that was that was a bit of a shocker um we had uh gallagher who uh oh, oh. god god smashed you know his, his fruit you know oh, love, gallagher. <laughs> love gallagher uh, your 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 batman and mine unfortunately kevin conroy left us this year that one hit in the balls yeah that was a yeah. big hit in the balls so i i always thought that that you know kevin conroy looked ill like if you look at images of him you know, past couple of years, he looked really like skinny and like that sort of thing. But like when he when I heard he passed, I was like, oh, fuck, because, you know, I, I, one of the things that at least I know growing up and I'm John, I'm sure you have probably had this conversation in schoolyards is who's the best Batman. And, you know, it always comes down to, oh, well, it's Michael Keaton or it's, you know, Val Kilmer or in the modern age, it's between, you know, Ben Affleck or uh christian bale or robin pattinson but the only person who in my mind has hit like every single mark when it comes to what makes batman batman has been kevin conroy he has had that voice he mastered being batman as well as bruce wayne and you know with the writing he had over the course of video games and with the original series and I mean, he has embodied that character to the point where I have always closely, you know, modeled him as what Batman should be. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And, it, and and I think it really helps, too, that like the idea of a continuing, uh, you know, episodic show is that like, yeah. you know, movies are great based on comic books, but comic books are continuing stories like, you know, issue three hundred and ninety seven. Like it's comic books should really be in a streaming format. Yeah. I know. It's they make a hell of a lot more move, money putting like Marvel and DC movies as movies, but uh, I think that that really helped Kevin Conroy go above and beyond anybody else because he had the most opportunity, as right? Well. But um, yeah, that one that one hit me in the old nads as well. Um, 
I can't believe it took this long, but Aaron Carter died. Of Oh, come on, man. That's rough. I can't say that. Well, I don't mean it in a way that I wanted him to. It's just it was kind of like it was bound to happen. He that whole family was really messed up. Um, And I guess what we call him like a solo act like Bieber. Is that Uh, kind of I mean, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about him to, to comment. I just it was really young. Yeah, I think he had every every issue under the sun, yeah. you know, times three twice on Sunday, you know, um, but uh, guy who married his own cousin, Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, <laughs> died. You don't lead with like musician <laughs> partially responsible for the rise in rock and roll. No guy who married his own cousin, who I think was also underage, but, yeah, you know, she was underage. Great balls of fire. Oh, yeah. man. Um, Hagrid died robbie coltrane uh, played hagrid and all that yeah. uh angela lansbury which was a uh surprising one that we lost this year uh country singer L- loretta lynn another singer yeah. uh coolio we lost that coolio. was surprising yeah. that was surprising i was like wow okay that's horrible yeah. uh Sashin little feather who and people are like yeah. who the hell is that that's oh. who marlon brando had except his oscar for the godfather in the and then she got booed and nearly attacked by John Wayne. Yeah, John Wayne wanted to punch her in the face. He, he literally wanted to, to like deck her. What a, a what a guy! Pull a, Wills, pull a Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anne ha- and and Hayes, excuse me. Um, but that was tragic. Somebody who could not. That was extremely tragic. Yeah, that was extremely tragic. I'm sad to hear that about that. I was I was really sad. Like I was I was like holy shit. Um, but yeah, very hor- horrible to hear. Uh, Olivia Newton John died, which um, makes me sad because, well, you know, unfortunately she died. But also, I always used her as a, a fake dead person just to see if people believed it because she oh. hadn't worked in years. Now I need a new fake dead person. You need to find somebody else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nichelle Nichols uh, from Star Trek, the original yeah, Star sad. Trek, passed away. Um, very much a game changer there. James Kahn, who died a day before my birthday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, James. Uh, uh, yeah, who's you know obviously a huge legend. Speaking massive of character again, actor, misery. Massive. Yeah, uh, Ray Liotta. Speaking of another character oh. actor we lost this year, William Hurt, another great character actor. Um, we oh, and uh, speaking of, uh, let's go into people who are funny. We lost Gilbert Godfrey, Ivan Reitman, and Bob Sackett this year. Yeah, because. The, you know, you know, when that that's how you know that the that we're going downhill is when all the humor is gone. <laughs> like yeah. like when when all the 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 humorists, the comedians are just like, no, nope, they're 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 gone now, too. It's like, yeah, well, world got just got a little less funny yeah. because of that. And uh, let's see. Peter Bogdanovich died. Sidney Poitier, two people in different ways who are just pioneers in the movie industry. Yep. And uh, and meatloaf, we lost meatloaf. We it, lost meatloaf. Meatloaf expired. Uh, <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> and this is I'm 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 guessing that 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 if we have people who are listening after this part, then they are true super fans <laughs> because any normal person would have turned off after this and gone like, <laughs> "Fuck these guys! I'm not listening to them." <laughs> um, and and the in the saddest loss we've had this year. Choco Taco. Oh, I thought you were going to say uh, Tommy from the Power Rangers. Oh, yeah, he did pass away too. Jason but, David Frank yeah. from, from unfortunately self inflicted. But but we lost the Choco Taco, Brian. We did. They're not making the Choco Taco anymore. Rest in peace. Choco. I mean, that was sad, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure like someone committing suicide because of their demons is far sadder. But I mean, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't eat his demons. <laughs> Just say it. Wow. Oh, yeah. And we had five people and now we're down to zero. <laughs> and All I'm right. going to have to. And it's going to be like do, do, when I edit this thing, I'm like, do I have to cut this whole fucking thing out? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's just move on to some statistics. Right? Okay. Let's get some statistics. All right. Here are the top 10 highest grossing movies of the year. Some of these surprised me. Some not so much. Uh, number 10, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 at $402 million. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I mean, really? uh, you know, it, it's it's a p- 
popcorn kid movie. First one wasn't terrible. I mean, all things considered, eh, I'm not surprised. Uh, Fantastic Beasts came in at number nine. Whatever, whatever they're calling this one now. The uh, that that whole damn series yeah. needs to die. Yeah, that <laughs> like, at, at four hundred five million, four hundred five million on that one. That, uh, why? Why? Just why? <laughs> number eight, uh, Thor: Love and Cancer, whatever the hell it was called. Oh, uh, you fucking asshole! Uh, Seven hundred and sixty. <laughs> Love and Cancer. <laughs> Or yeah, or babies and cancer. I'm not sure what it was called. Seven hundred and sixty million. The Batman came in at seven hundred and seventy million at number seven. Damn right. So it, it squeezed here between two Marvel movies because number six is uh, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever at eight hundred and twenty million. I'm not. That makes sense. Number five, the motherfucking minions. Stop making these movies. Oh uh, yeah, they, 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 it's. You know what I think the minions are? I think it's the glitter of the film industry. They're they're like little tumors. They just they don't yeah. they you can't get rid of it because yeah. it's just one that they, their merchandising is ridiculous. Like they're oh, yeah. so fucking cute. Like I even I'll say it. Like minions are fucking cute. And as a parent, I can say if I'm looking at the theater, I'm going like, oh well, what's what's playing that I could take the kids to, or you know, one of them to. Because t- trying to take four kids to a, a movie is kind of like of varying know, ages. It, yeah. Well, you're just you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. Um, but but no, like if I see the Minions one, I'm going to ask Coraline, like, do you want to go see that? Now, I didn't see the rise of Gru because I don't care. Um, <laughs> but I, I imagine it's the same cookie cutter plot and there's popular music thrown in bright colors and whatever fucking language that the. Uh, you know, pill shaped characters are saying so it's, good for them. <laughs> it's a mo- it's movies like this. That is the reason we don't have a World Trade Center any longer. Oh, you can't say that. It's the, it, <laughs> it's the minions. Can't. You just can't say that shit. I'm man. pretty sure Bin Laden, if you go through the transcripts, oh, he brought God. up minions, even though they weren't even a lot. They weren't even they a, weren't yeah. even a thing. <laughs> Unless you're saying yeah. that he was a time traveler and he time traveled forward in time and saw what was going to happen. Um, it sounds like a pretty good plot for a movie, by the way. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Time traveling Bin Laden saw the minions oh, and no. decided to turn Jesus against the United Christ. States. Jesus Christ. Uh, well, that one made 940 million. Uh, Doctor Strange. Gee, it seems like it's a Marvel thing. Who knew? Uh, Doctor Strange multi universe, uh, 955 million. Somehow, some way, Jurassic World 3, Ugh. more, even more dinosaurs, whatever it was called. Even eight, more dumb. Yeah, made a billion dollars. Of course it did. Yeah. Number two, already Avatar 2, 1.4 billion. You know what's interesting? Like, I went and recently saw the movie Megan, and mm-hmm. I saw that in the waterfront. I don't know if you've been to the waterfront recently, mm-hmm. our, our theater, the AMC waterfront. Uh, they have, like, a special theater for Avatar. Did you see it? I i've seen i've seen that in theaters yeah like the xd kind of like oh it was like theater. there was some like blue light shit and i'm like i'm like that's pretty cool but yeah um i haven't seen that yet so i can't i can't comment that actually might be one that I, I see relatively soon because i got i got the amc stubs pack um so like we're I, not I'm, sponsored by amc stubs. i'm not but if they want to give me money <laughs> they can yeah. like they can totally. and as well, as we mentioned earlier top gun maverick at 1.5 billion dollars i still uh. can't Still can't quite wrap my head around that one. I'm just, I'm just keep, I keep thinking to myself, this is why Hollywood's dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is the reason. Like, every one of those things that you brought up, man, they're either uh, a franchise, um, a sequel, or a reboot. Or, yeah, a frequel boot. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, None of those things are at all uh, things that that are, you know, in essence, going to be, uh, you know, original films. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, here here are the biggest flops of year. I'm going to do the top five. All right. So 3000 Years of Longing, which actually is a good movie, but somehow made for 60 million dollars, only made 19 million. Um. I guess people who like Mad Max didn't want to have see him make a movie about a genie. But now, uh, number four, the three fifty five. Remember the three fifty five, Brian. Remember the three fifty five. No. Remember. No. 
came out in like February, of like no. a women assassin secret agent team. Remember nope. 355? Yeah, nope. uh, nobody does. Uh, it was made for $75 million and made $28 million. Um, number three on here, Amsterdam, which is like the new one from, oh God, I can't remember. David I Russell? See, yeah, I, saw, I, I didn't see it yet. I, uh, I was I was I, I was gonna see a film uh during like the holiday break and I think I was deciding between that one and Babylon and I'm I, I didn't dis- I didn't go to see either of them because the holidays is nuts but but yeah I, I saw that I'm like oh that looks interesting Babylon's a much better choice but I I, I figured it was but Amsterdam lost 60 million dollars oh yeah and I'm not even counting in like a guesstimate on what it cost to promote these movies this is just box office to uh you know how much they paid to make the yeah. movie. Uh, number two, Moonfall, which I didn't even know was a movie. Um, I, I think I saw it advertised, and I was like, "That looks like a a bargain bin Netflix film or yeah. Amazon Prime film." That lost eighty four million dollars. Ooh, well, that's rough. And Strange World, which is like, I, I is Pixar. it Pixar? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to even take a guess on how much this one has lost? Uh, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a clue. It had a budget of two hundred million. Oh, I'm gonna guess it lost what eighty, one hundred and forty five million dollars. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is like I saw that Strange World got got ported over to Disney Plus within maybe like two weeks of it being out, and that's how I knew it was doing bad because for it to jump immediately to Disney Plus or any streaming platform that quick tells you that they're like yep pull it we don't care put it out there somewhere so we're getting some sort of money on it um but yeah that's really that's really shitty yeah i was i was shocked by that i'm like wait disney can't lose money they never well, lose money. well pixar can pixar yeah. can pixar is as i feel so terrible for pixar because they've had some movies that were were pretty good like i i don't know did you see turning red no, I, I've only heard good things. Though, it was a really thought. cute movie. But you know what happened to it? It came out during the pandemic. So it made it only to Disney Plus. Never, it never got screened. And then you have movies like Strange World, which apparently didn't do very well. And, you know, it, it, it sucks. It just sucks for Pixar. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> they, they have Nemo. <laughs> they'll yeah, be well, fine for now yeah, yeah. and another toy story because you know they got to make a thousand of those yeah oh yeah 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 um so shall we do our our, our best and worst here of okay i mean i don't have any worst ones i got i got i wrote a list of four best ones okay well let me then i'll just briefly go over you go over uh, your your best uh, and worst. so i i will say this worst um it was actually kind of difficult to come up with top 10 because i i saw a lot of movies that were eh but like weren't ones that I would put in a top 10 worst. So even my 10th one to, to uh, finish this up, I don't mm-hmm. really think even deserves to be here, but I just needed a number 10. Um, so starting at a number 10, don't worry, darling. Yeah, it was bad. It, it just like it had so much promise and just couldn't land anything. And all it did was left me with like dozens upon dozens of questions that I don't know if they thought it was going to be really successful and they were going to make sequels or something, but they purposely just left things just completely. I, I think that movie suffers more from the onset drama than the movie itself. Yep. Like, like I think going into it, if you read any of the onset drama, uh, it's going to spoil the movie itself. Plus, you know, you, the, all, the meme of Chris Pine, like staring off into space, question his own existence. That, 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 that meme is hilarious when he's, <laughs> when he's talking about the movie. It's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, number, number nine, black Adam. Oh, what a, what a waste of time. Yeah. Fuck that movie. I, I saw it recently and I'm just like, this is what the rock was saying. He was like, this is it going to be the greatest one of all time? And, and yeah, I trained so hard. I'm like, you failed. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's going to be the greatest movie ever. My tequila, you know, so you should go out and see it. Tequila. <laughs> The Rock's tequila, tequila. Go to see the movie, tequila. <laughs> but yeah, it was just I just uninspired trite. You know, like yeah. somehow Marvel can get away with making uninspired trite. You still go, eh, I was entertained. This one, I was just like, when is it going to end? Well, what I find hilarious is just like, remember a couple of years ago when literally The Rock could not fail? Right. Like he'd make the worst garbage on the planet. He made like fucking skyscraper. Right. 
not not the Anna Nicole Smith one that we talked about, but like the <laughs> real movie. But he he goes ahead and makes that shit. It makes a shit ton of money, and and then he thinks that he can just parlay that into a superhero movie, and it fucking falls on its face. Part of me likes to see that sort of thing, just be, as as uh, you know, kind of like what George Carlin used to say when when you drive by an accident, you go to look out and you want to see how bad it is. Where you want to see like the rain coming down on the couch and keeps raining and raining. It's like that sort of thing. You like to see that sort of thing happen. But man, it, this one was massive. This is a massive hit. Um, number number eight, Halloween ends. What an absurdly idiotic oh. sequel. It's like, I want to see a Michael Myers movie without Michael Myers in it. Oh, well, he's in it every once in a while, but he's just an elderly, broken man. Who lies in a sewer and eats rats and probably eats his own poop? It's like, yay, Halloween! Yeah, no, man. Like I, I, Lauren and I went to watch that one as we weren't going to go to a theater, and yeah, it was unforgivable. And Lauren is a massive Halloween fan, and I know she was just like, "This is shit. This is really bad." Like we were, we were disappointed by the the whole seat. Se- you know, whatever you want to call it, sequel trilogy or the I don't know what the the David Gordon Green verse or whatever fuck shit. I don't I don't know. But I, I just know that we were disappointed by that one. Well, and it just doesn't make any sense in the context of the series where they went very much by the books for the first and second one. And then the third one, they're like, let's just subvert all of their expectations. Like, no, you can't do that. I, I mean, that's just being a dick to your audience. It would be like if in Return of the Jedi, Luke decided just to give up the whole rebel thing and just become a dancer, like staying alive, but with like yeah. Luke Skywalker. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> I, I think this is another example of filmmakers trying to be too smart for their own fucking good. Yeah, <laughs> you're 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 not. And here's the funny thing. It's like I've criticized Rian Johnson for, you know, the Star Wars movies and like in rewatching his, you know, uh, lat, not not. Was it last Jedi? Yeah, last, last Jedi. Jedi. Yeah. Um, you know, at the time I liked it, but as, as I as I've grown older and watched it a bit more, I've started to see those parts that I know you would dislike, um, and I can see them a bit more clearly and seeing how it doesn't really work for Star Wars. And I think the same thing happened with this one, right? Like people want one thing; they want uh, Jamie Lee Curtis fighting Michael Myers. That's it. They don't want the the Corey Connors story, or whatever the fuck his name was. Um, th- they didn't want that shit. And like the minute I saw that whole thing occur, like I'm seeing him wear the overalls. I'm like, oh, they're fucking going this way, aren't they? And I'm like, uh, you fucking assholes. <laughs> no one wanted that. Well, and every they want to make the they want to try to make these movies as cerebral as possible because it doesn't people, need to be. People don't want to admit. That they're dumb movies, and I love the original Halloween, but they're dumb movies. And it's a dumb okay. movie. Hey, it's a dumb franchise. It's a yeah. dumb premise. Yeah, just accept that, and you'll have a better time. Yeah. You know. Um, but uh, number seven, Uncharted or Unfarted. So I don't really care for it. I, I didn't see it. Yeah. So uh, another failed. Uh, yeah, video, video game, game movie. movie. Yeah, big uh, shocker. <laughs> yeah. Number six, the remake of Firestarter. Just, you know, I didn't see that either. I, I, I never really saw the original with Drew Barrymore, so I really had no, you know, idea what to expect. I did. It was 80s cheese. Like it was yeah. that one wasn't very good either, but at least it was like 80s cheese. This one, you could tell that they wanted to take it more seriously because they're, I think they're riding off the whole like Pet Cemetery yeah. remake and Doctor Sleep. And they're like, oh, Stephen King's back. Let's, what can we make? What can we, right. Um, yeah, so they took it themselves too seriously, and it just it just fell flat on his face. Mm-hmm. Um, number five, Scream Five. I didn't see it. So for obvious reasons, so unspeakably unnecessary. But there's the a sixth one, John. It's coming. At least they're going like <laughs> Predator Two style, and they're like doing it in the city. At least, at least there's something different. <laughs> at least. Um, but uh, number number four, uh, Thor: Love and Cancer. Uh, I liked it. I know you hated it. This movie was was intellectually insulting. <laughs> I liked it, and it was too it. it was too much of a comedy for its own sake. 
Like, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's something where like, like, I know you didn't like Ragnarok, but majority of people did. Yeah. I'm um, like, I'm on an Island. <laughs> you're an Island on that one. <laughs> and, and like, I could see with this one where that formula is wearing a bit thin. And I think even Chris Hemsworth has said like, yeah, this is wearing a bit thin. Um, I also think he's just, he doesn't want to do it anymore. I'm getting the feeling he doesn't want to do this anymore. He's like the last of them, isn't he? Of he's, like, uh, Renner's gone, Scarlet's yeah. gone, Chris is gone. Yeah, they're all. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, no, uh, Hulk. Hulk is still there. He's yeah. he's the he's the last of the like Phase One Marvel because remember they had uh, Edward Norton as Hulk before. Uh, Mark Ruffalo stuck. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. It was always been Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo has <laughs> always been the Hulk. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 now go buy Hulk merchandise with Mark Ruffalo's face on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, number three, the, and I can't, this is another one of those situations. I don't want to be confusing, but the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I didn't even see it. I know you guys are thinking like, John, that movie that came out in the seventies. No. no. No, they're doing that whole Halloween 2018 thing. So this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. Well, I think I think they just removed the the word the from it, which just yeah, called it Texas different. Chainsaw. Kind of like what they did with with the Fast and the Furious, and they just called it Fast and Furious or Fast Five, Furious yeah. Six, Furious yeah. Six or whatever fucking shit. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's that's what they did with that one. I didn't see it because I don't really care. Honestly, Texas Chainsaw Massacre has been a series that I don't really. Uh, one, it's just so uneven in quality uh, that I don't really care for. It. It's just the first one that you don't the need to see one, any of them. The, the other, ones. the first one's great. It's fantastic. The second one, the camp is good. I like Bill Mosley as Chop Top. He's hilarious in it, but it's not the same type of movie. Uh, it's a different kind of movie. Uh, Dennis Hopper as like the sheriff who's trying to avenge his kid. It's hilarious, but you know, it's not serious at all. No. Uh, number two, Morbius. It's Morbin time. Oh, God. That one's a funny one just because it like flopped so hard and then somehow it gained traction again, was thrown back in the theaters because of some resurgence in people liking it, and you, you still flopped. Well, they put it back in theaters because people were making fun of it and they went, well, hey, any press is good press. And yeah. no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's Idiots. not. It's yeah. stupid. Stupid fucking movie. Yeah, and and yeah, uh, it just tanked again. Oh, when when is Hollywood going to stop giving Jared Leto so many roles? I don't know. I don't know. They're like, we need a vampire. Who are we going to call? I don't know. Nicholas Cage is busy shooting Renfield. So how about yeah. Jared Leto? No. <laughs> um. And and number one, a movie I almost got kicked out of for hysterically laughing at the ending. And everyone around me was mag eating their juju bees and popcorn. Jurassic World <laughs> Dino Dump. Yeah, I, I really wish that I was there when you almost got kicked out. <laughs> when the fucking dinosaur looks back at him and like almost tilts its like dinosaur hat at Chris Pratt, I'm like, I'm in tears. I'm laughing so hard. Oh, I just I know they're probably never going to stop making those fucking things, even though they've said like, oh, yeah, this is the final one of but this trilogy. They're going to make like, please, yeah. for the love of God, stop making these things. That one was just God awful. I hated having to watch it. I was just like, I can't I can't take this. It's so bad. <laughs> D blew the dinosaur. Just find my babies. <laughs> I really wish that he had just taught or she had just taught. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I, they should have just fully gone into it. Like, Blue the Dinosaur. You have is, to find my babies. Yeah, and he has to talk just like that because that's the only way that I would have laughed even harder at the scene. <laughs> but just the reaction is just, find my babies. And you found my babies, so I won't eat you. I'm yeah. sorry. It, it's it, it's hilarious. Oh, she can have pearls and stuff. You know, like that so the dinosaurs like back in yeah. the nineties, the with the puppetry and stuff. She can have pearls like the mom. Find my babies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this would be so much better. Oh, big, big fat dinosaur titties. I like it. <laughs> it, it again, are you watching Pornhub while you're <laughs> watching Jurassic World? I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> oh man. 
Um, all right. Well, let, let's let's stop this negativity and go to go to the top ten best movies of the year. All right, we're the top ten. Real all right, quick. so for ten, I got <laughs> I got Tar, which not a lot of movies. Sorry right, about Kate Blanchett, who's a composer and just basically ha- has a has a breakdown. Very obsessed with her work and just like slowly just loses it all. Uh, it's yeah. a very slow burn. It's like two and a half hours. So, um, but uh, I would definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, number nine, three thousand years of longing. Um, I didn't see it. it. It's from George Miller. You know, so for all yeah. of you that rings something in your ear, Mad that Max. Mad Max. Yeah. Um, very, very understated movie, and uh, not what I thought I w- was going to get into with the movie, like where it went. Um, but uh, very much like a brilliant, thoughtful fairy tale in reality's world. So, um. Yeah, very good. Uh, number eight, the menu. Oh man, I can't say how much I like this movie. Oh man. Uh, now, also, I love food. So, like the first like oh. 30, 30 minutes of the movie, I'm like, I don't even care if this turns into a horror movie. I just like the food. <laughs> I I was I thought it was going to be something different. I thought it was going to be something else. Like I saw the trailer for it when I saw Nope, and I'm just like, this looks like it's going to be like cannibalism or some shit. No. It was so much more than that, and I can't wait to talk about it uh, on the next episode because that I, I think that falls in the horror category. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, dark comedy, a little thriller, mostly horror. I yeah. Would say. Um, number seven, um, the Fablesman. Uh, Fablemans. Fablemans. The Fablemans. Yeah. Uh, yeah also known as Steven Spielberg's biography. Yeah, it was. It's Steven Spielberg's Piano Man. Like why yeah. I'm awesome by Steven Spielberg. D- it wasn't good enough to make my top five, but it was still good. I haven't seen it yet. It was it Looks was good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. great. But when was the last time Steven made anything great? Late 90s? Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln was very good. Okay. I'll give him that one. I'll give him Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> uh number six, Babylon. Not for the faint really, of heart. I really need to see that. I keep seeing good things about it, and it it's my it's my kind of movie, like a movie about movies. That's yeah. that's my thing. So I know I need to see that one. You know, they say like in screenwriting, your your opening scene should set the tone for your yeah. movie. Um, and the opening of this movie, they're trying to get an elephant up a hill, um, off of like really you know old ass like nineteen twenties cars, and they're yeah. trying to. And the elephant gets really scared and they're trying to push from behind. And the elephant takes a massive, like two minute dump on a guy's head. And it's like, okay, that's the kind of movie we're getting. This is, this is the kind of movie I'm getting. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and then immediately, uh, shortly after that, a woman pisses on a fat man. So it's like, okay. Oh, wow. Well, well yeah. it's that kind of film. <laughs> <laughs> but very entertaining. Yeah. And if you like the, the, the origins of Hollywood and movie yeah. making very, very entertaining, very long. Make sure yeah. you pee before you go in. <laughs> Don't get the big soda. Uh, number five, uh, all quiet on the Western front. Uh, the second remake of all quiet. On the Western okay. Front. It's still good. Still great. Um, I don't think it resonated the way that it probably did in 1930. Um, probably not for the original, but still a great exploration of just how hellish war can be. Um, number four for me was, uh, the Batman. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That was one of my picks. That was one yeah. of my picks, too, for best best film. I mean, it, it was it's it was just awesome. good. It's just very, it's, very good. And you know what? Yeah. You know what I love about it? It's got a hell of a replay value. Yeah. You know, like I, I've seen it probably at least five or six times now, and it's still good. It's still solid. It's the Batman that I want to see. It's not campy. It's very dark. And I know you could say, well, well, there's a lot of dark Batman. It's like, yeah, I get that. But like, this is a Batman that uses his detective mind. And I kind of like that. It's more what you don't get story than often. superhero. Yeah. But yeah, I, I especially amongst like the sea of Marvel films. It's really good. Oh, yeah. It it it, go, it just shows how shitty the Marvel movies are <laughs> when you see this. Like, yeah. Oh, this is what a superhero movie can be. Yeah. Uh, number three for me, The Northman. I didn't see that one yet. I'd love I, I love really this good, director. Though. I love him so much. And I, I hate that. Is that is that uh, what's his face? Robert Eggers. Yeah, I was going to say Robert Eggers. I hate that he's compared with Ari Aster because I think Ari Aster is a hack fraud. And I think Robert Eggers <laughs> is the thinking man's like horror movie director. Although the Northman is not really a horror movie. I'm I'm looking yeah. forward to his Nosferatu. Oh, 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 oh. That. <laughs> that's like, that's my jam right there. Yeah. Like you, you got me. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. 
but just what an exploration into like toxic masculinity and how it can just absolutely destroy people for for things that never should have been an issue in the first place like um and yeah a lot of people are going to think this movie is like all bro and like you know and toxic in the wrong way it's like no read between the lines this movie is not pro masculinity it's not Mm -hmm. uh and number two for me the whale i haven't seen it yet it's 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 a hard watch i I know it's a hard watch but i want i know i want to watch it and i'm i'm gonna guess that's probably gonna win best picture um but I, I really think so. I, j- just because of Brendan Fraser's performance from what I'm, I'm gathering. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want to see it, but I know it's a hard watch. Yeah. He's, he's fantastic in it. And I do, I do not want to know what it was like to shoot that movie because like you even hear like Mike Myers talk about playing fat bastard. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I hated that character the most because like having to put on all that latex and how heavy it was. And like, it took me 20 minutes to be able to take a piss and mm-hmm. I couldn't do it by myself. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, but he's only fat bastard in those movies for like, you know, three or four minutes. There's a whole movie. There's a whole fucking movie. And yeah. he's supposed to be 600 pounds. I'm like, That's God, crazy. damn. Um, I do have a recommendation. I think that people would think it was like a fart in church if I if I ended on a documentary. So I'm not going to have this be my number one. But Who We Are is a documentary about uh, an intell- an African-American intellectual who who breaks down the history of uh, of racism and uh of this country and how it's just continued on from the days of slavery to the civil war to this day yeah and now we're we're not out of the woodwork and all these republicans like you ain't want to teach us that it's a racist country and hate their country like watch this and then tell me you know that you 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 don't think it's important for us to know where we came from i want to say that those people are beyond redemption (laughs) <laughs> that's that's my perspective on it is that those people are so brainwashed and beyond redemption i'm sorry i wish they weren't but that's where we're at i mean i know i'll, I'll probably watch i haven't seen it yet but um is that on hbo max as of right now yeah i don't Maybe. know if i don't know where it's because i remember i wanted to show or it was somebody. it on the chopping block <laughs> <laughs> might have, yeah, it might have been. Yeah, because I remember I wanted to show it to somebody, so I think I paid for it. Like I think I rented it on like YouTube or something. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. But number one here, and I feel very weird um, because I'm not even sure I'm saying it correctly. But it's my favorite movie of the year, uh, The Banshees of Inertia. Uh, it's a it's an Irish movie. Has Colin okay. Farrell. Uh, I saw and Dom yeah. Gleason. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, I apologize not, not, if I that, butchered the no, title. No, not Dom yeah. Gleason. Is it Dom Gleason? Or is it? Yeah, no, it, yeah, I think Domo Gleason because Brandon Gleason is the son. I believe so, or I could be wrong. <laughs> but you know what? What an amazing exploration of uh, the Irish Civil War through yeah. two people. You know, it's you know, like I always say, like I love the Butter Battle book. That's my favorite Dr. Seuss mm-hmm. book because it's about the Cold War. Um, yeah. And so this whole movie is just basically a metaphor for the Irish Civil War, and it, it, but it's just told through between two friends like one of them just doesn't want to be a friend anymore and says like if you don't stop bothering me i'm going to start cutting off my fingers wow even oh i'm a musician and my goal is that i don't want to be around you any longer because i feel like you're holding me back from being a great musician but i'm also going to cut off the fingers of the hand i play with if you don't leave me alone and so like cutting off your nose to spite your own face and it's just like it's just it's so it's bizarrely funny for how brutal and sad and misanthropic it is. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's an incredible film. So I very well, much. I, I have four that okay. are my my top four and ones that I like. One we already mentioned it, the Batman goes without saying. I'm a massive mm-hmm. Batman fan. Sure. Um number three, Glass Onion. I really liked Glass Onion. I it was very said. entertaining. If, it if was I entertaining. Had- I liked Knives Out, and this was right up my my alley. I honestly think that um, what's his face, James Bond, <laughs> Daniel Craig, <laughs> yeah, Daniel Craig. I I I like him as, in this character more than I like him in James Bond. That's fair. I think he's yeah. hilarious in this, and I, 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 and I he's got a hell hell of a a uh, funny bone with the, it comes to these character. Like he he's hilarious in it. Um, Pearl. Which we're gonna definitely talk about that one. Oh yeah, is is also my number yeah. three. Yeah. Well, actually, I'd say that that's probably number two because I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, I mean, I I I love Pearl more than I liked X. Like I, me too. When we, when we were at Erie Horror Fest, 
we saw Pearl in theater and I was like, this is a fucking amazing movie. Um, scary as all hell, but just really, really good. Um, and then I went home, well, went to the, the hotel afterwards and I watched X and I'm like, it's all right, but I really like Pearl. Yeah. Um, well, Pearl just goes for it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it knows exactly what kind of movie it is. Yeah. Um, and then my number one is everything everywhere all at once. Really? Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I dug the, the one, the fact that you're using practical effects tickles my cockles right there. Not going to lie as the, as a effects person, like I love that. Um, and then on top of that, I really dug the story. I, I mean, I was entertained. I, I was locked in on it, Thought the characters are great. Uh, the hot dog fingers gross me the fuck out. Like <laughs> I actually like my stomach turned a bit. So, uh, but I really liked the movie. I know Lauren liked it too. It was Man, funny. I see. We I saw that with a bunch of colleagues at Row House, and yeah. I I kept my mouth shut because I didn't want to be that hipster. Because I you thought to myself, I went like, eh, it was all right. I have problems with it. But everybody came out. We're like, well, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, I'm just gonna. I, I don't know if I call it the greatest thing I've ever seen, yeah. but I and for me, like that was that was my. I I really enjoyed that that this this year. Like it was it was a, it was a fun one, and I mean. When are you ever going to see uh, the actor who played Short Round? Short. <laughs> he doesn't ever yeah. show up in anything, and we're so as I see him, and he still got it, you know. Um, but no, I I really liked everything, everywhere, all at once. It was a good movie. Yeah. It, fun, funny story to wrap it up. He he was at a premiere where Harrison Ford was, and he's like, "Oh man, he's not going to remember me. He's not going to recognize me." <laughs> and he goes up to him, and he's like, uh, "Mr. Ford," and he went, "Hey, aren't you that kid that played the kid?" In the second indie movie, <laughs> he went, "That's me, Mr. Ford." <laughs> it's like, well, at least he he didn't know the title of it, even yeah. though he's the star of it, and he didn't remember the kid's name in the movie. But at least he knew it was him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's a lot for 2022. A lot of a lot of movies there. A lot of stuff. I don't know how much of that I'm going to have to edit out. But either way, <laughs> uh, I'm glad we're in 2023. Looking forward to some movies we're going to be talking about before we close the books on 22. We got to talk about horror because, yes, man, this past year was one of the strongest for the horror movie that I've seen in a long time. And we're talking good shit, not just terrible B movie shit. Yeah. Uh, although there was some of that too good, so, bad, tent pole, everything. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right, John. So, where can they find you at? on the social medias uh over there on the twitter uh unreal j wolves tweet me just try to be nice and I'll, I'll be nice back um unless you really had a problem with this episode <laughs> uh, really want we to have anyone back. left i don't know yeah um, um <laughs> yeah follow me over at uh you know on youtube at uh j does video nasties uh i'm gonna really try to ramp up my releases this year i was late on everything and got delayed a, a million times in the fourth quarter of this year but i'm going to try to to streamline it this year so um i'm looking to do an episode on mrs doubtfire because i have so many questions so that that yeah. should be next and of course you can find me on uh at brian clinton i also run the psycho show page be sure to like us and follow us on at, at psycho show on facebook twitter instagram uh we are also on tiktok at the cinema psycho show show check that out i guess i haven't posted anything recently on there but uh and of course if you have a favorite movie or if you want to send us hate mail because maybe we pissed you off somehow i imagine that that might have happened a couple times <laughs> during this episode uh you can find us uh at at the cinema psycho show.com so send us that email there and of course follow us wherever you listen to audio and we will see you next time well somebody needs to wipe baby new year <laughs> <laughs>